Let's continue with our iterative example going from advent axis to D3 to R and eventually the grand finale of the iPhone. Since we'll be going into a lot more detail in this example, here's a quick highlight reel of all that we accomplished. We'll add interactivity, animations, and transitions with D3. And then we'll communicate with R over a web socket, and then we'll open it all up on an iPhone, where it will work almost as well as on our desktop browser. Now let's go into the details of implementation. We'll start with Advent Access. Advent Access is an old technology solution uh, provided by Advent. It's the dominant portfolio accounting and performance reporting software for registered investment advisors or RIAs. Here's what a standard report looks like. Uh, we'll choose uh, performance report, start and end date, 12-month um, period, so it's annual performance. And then Advent, uh, we'll credit them with this, actually provides a very nice benefit in that we can interact with Excel to provide charts within our report. So if we run the report, you can see there's the text output. And then if we click at the button up here, you'll see what well, looks to be a Microsoft Excel chart. If we double click on it, it actually is. Since we're now in an Excel environment, it's much easier to uh, maneuver and change chart elements, formatting, all of that stuff. So let's do that real quickly. We'll do it manually this time, but of course, in a normal reporting environment, we'd have to write some Visual Basic for applications to apply templates, change colors, and do other layout features to make it somewhat respectable. But even after all that, we're, we still don't have any level of interactivity. It works for print reports. So that's why I got very excited when I started experimenting with D3 JavaScript. And then especially excited when I saw Bruce McPherson's Excel rambling site where he shows how he uses Excel to send JSON and then produce a web page that has all the interactivity and power of D3. As I mentioned, I do credit Advent with providing this very nice functionality. What we can do is use Visual Basic for applications to program and automate much of this. If we look at that same report, click the same button, Graph, you'll notice where it says Excel File and then Excel Macro Name. So we can access all the power of VBA um, with that button, and that's what we'll do. So let's real quickly look at our modified version of uh, C data set from Bruce McPherson's C data set. We'll open it up in Excel and try to analyze exactly what's happening. When we open it up, you'll see what appears to be elements of a HTML web page, and that's what it actually is. We're limited to the length of text within each cell, so what we'll use is VBA to piece together all of these different features and also embed a JSON from the performance that Axis sends. For those of you that aren't aware, um, we can, this little trick, we can change that line to stop. And what that does is VBA will stop when it reaches that point, which allows us to debug and analyze um, what we're actually doing. Let's run my modified performance history report, um, get away, make sure we avoid any sort of IP problems. We'll run Excel macro, see data set, and then the macro within it is called test D3 axis. So we'll run that, hit OK, and when it reaches that line that we told it to stop, it will stop and allow us to see Microsoft Excel. As expected, we actually it stopped where we wanted to. Here's one more trick for those that aren't aware. 
application not visible equals true will allow us to see the Microsoft Excel workbook, not just the VBA. So if you've ever struggled with Advent Access, that's a very nice option. You'll see a report and a chart. We didn't pay any attention to the formatting because what we really want is just this text data here. Uh, we'll clean it up as before, but this time with VBA, erase a couple rows, some columns, and do some very basic formatting, and then use Bruce McPherson's JSON function to embed that JSON within the web page that we saw earlier. Here you'll see the Visual Basic for Applications or VBA code that um, does some of the basic cleanup. It'll run through, delete a couple rows, some columns, change the formatting, and then move on to the D3 Access function. Now that we've cleaned up a little bit, let's go into the actual production of the web page and JSON. That happens right here. It'll read the parameters in as JSON, and those parameters will contain the content. We'll set up a couple more breakpoints so we can see some of the intermediate steps. Let's set up one here. When we reach this point, we'll see the full web page down this console window. We can print content, and what we'll see is that that is all the HTML and JSON and JavaScript that we need to produce our interactive D3 chart. So let's look at it a little more, and you can see if we actually copied and pasted this into a file and opened it in our browser, we would get a very nice result but since we're automating through the VBA code this next couple set of functions will produce a local HTML file and then open it within our default browser. I do suggest that you set your default browser to be Safari or Chrome if you're going to use D3. So Internet Explorer does not support D3 as well as those other browsers and here we go. This looks very similar to our last example. Uh, there's a little transition, but we've added some interactivity. This isn't quite production quality, but it does illustrate some of the power that we get. Remember before we had a static Excel chart that we embedded into a print report. Here though, with Power of D3, we can add interactivity, animation, and we make it a much better communication mechanism for analysis, uh, client reporting, or presentations. If we look at what's happening here, if you're not familiar with Chrome, you can actually debug just like we did with the VBA window. We'll see if we analyze the elements. D3 uses SVG or HTML to produce charts, but if you get into any sort of uh, detailed charting, you'll definitely want to use SVG or scalable vector graphics. Here, if we open up these elements, you'll notice down the last two lines there will change as we mouse over each of these bars. The color changes and a label um, appropriately colored and also rotated differently depending on if it's negative or positive will occur. Again, this isn't production quality but it, it does show some of what we can accomplish with very few lines of code. So since we see how that interactivity works, now we can see what happens when we push this new button up here, Draw Cumulative Growth. 
and that's a new feature that we added. What we'll do is remove the bar chart that we have up there and use um, the cumulative performance that we calculated within JavaScript to draw another chart that's very useful in performance analysis. Again, it's not production quality. We're just focusing on proof of concept. And when we run through this code, I think that it very easily demonstrates that we can successfully accomplish this with a couple more lines of code. So let's run through the rest and you can see a fairly decent looking chart. We did not really apply any um, extensive CSS or styling to this, but still it looks pretty nice. For the next feature that we've added here, um, last time in the last example we sent the performance data to R. R created a performance summary chart with the performance analytics package and sent that chart back. So we replaced the D3 chart with uh, that JPEG. Um, this time we'll use this R WebSockets package that's very nicely provided, contributed by Brian Lewis. And instead of providing a graphic, we'll continue with our interactive elements that we get with D3. And we'll send, we'll just use R to calculate the drawdown. Drawdown is not a really difficult calculation, but um, since it's already coded very well in R, why don't we send the performance data to R to let it do drawdown or even the more sophisticated calculations and then R can return those calculations to D3 so that we don't have to recode all the performance analytics and multiple um, statistics. So here if we hit draw, send to R, it will send the performance data. You can see established connection. R will calculate drawdown, send that back as a JSON, and D3 will remove the cumulative line growth chart and now draw a drawdown chart. So now let's run through it real quickly um, without some of the debugging that we've done before. We'll refresh the screen. Here is the bar chart, which we have a nice transition. We've added interactivity with labeling and color changing as we mouse over. There's the access data that was sent to Excel. Excel converts that to JSON, embeds it into a web page, and then opens up this within our browser. We added this line, cumulative growth, where JavaScript calculates cumulative growth, and then uses D3 to draw the line chart. And then for the most powerful feature, we send the data to R, which calculates drawdown, sends it back to the web, and then we have drawdown in D3. And if all that's not enough for the grand finale, let's use the iPhone to open it all up and watch as it behaves just as we expected. Safari on the iPhone and iPad provides WebSocket communication, so we can open that same web page within the iPhone, and magically we have a very beautiful D3 chart. Beautiful is probably too strong a word, but it is amazing that we have same level of interactivity, slightly changed because this is touch now. We can hit draw, animate or transition the removal of the bar chart, draw our cumulative line, and then hit send to R and through the WebSocket from our iPhone, we communicate with our Windows R and draw that drawdown chart. So let's do it one more time just to prove it. We do bar chart cumulative growth, send through WebSocket performance data, and R returns drawdown, and our iPhone draws the chart.